Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. Uh, first off, thank you for getting me to 12,000 subscribers. So it's time for my game giveaway. Find the Geek, little competition. If you uh, can find this little devil here uh, embedded in my video and uh, email me the time frame he is at, um, I will uh, award up the winner a game of their choice up to the value of $60 on Steam or G2A. And uh, it'll be open up for uh, 24 hours, so don't feel rushed. Just uh, email me the, the time frame and good luck. So um, I, uh, this video is about uh, a comparison between uh, the 15 watt uh, CPUs like the i5-8550U or i7-8650U uh, 15 watt TDP parts, uh, which are quad core um, with, uh, turbo, uh, with hyper threading, so that's uh, eight threads, or the i7-7700HQ, which again, another 45 watt part, and uh, that is, uh, Again, quad core, eight threads. The uh, i7-7820HK, again, a 45 watt uh, TDP part. Quad core, eight threads, but overclockable this time. Comparing them against the, the new i7-8750H CPU, again, another 45 watt part. That is in the new laptops that are being released. It seems that, uh, you know, being in the United States, these laptops get released first, and then they slowly filter down to other countries. For example, the, the Dell G7 I reviewed, um, that still is not in India, and uh, you know I understand not even in the UK. So, so perhaps they're stuck with perhaps buying the uh, the i7 7700HQ and wondering how much performance are they giving up. And uh, the reason why I threw in like the the 15 watt parts, like uh, you know you get on this uh, the Dell, uh, I mean the ASUS Flip 14, is because there is uh, the Microsoft Surface Book 2 does have the uh, i7 8650U and a GTX 1060, and I did review that and check up here if you haven't seen that video, but you know, what performance uh, do you give away then? And certainly compared to something like this with a GTX 1060. So let's uh, take a look. So first up we have uh, Cinebench. The uh, i7 8050, 8550U comes in, uh, comes in last, you know, 603 points um, versus uh, the uh, i7 8650U at 665. Now overclocking them or boosting them up um, brings them into, into you know, the i7 7700HQ territory and it's uh, still not far off the stock clock i7 7820HK, which is not surprising really. But of course that can be overclocked and boosted up quite a bit. But those extra two cores in the i7 8750H certainly help in, in here. So a massive improvement. If you're looking at if you're looking at a real application, for example, like uh, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, you, you know you can use that uh, program to use uh, use the GPU to accelerate. But if you're using the CPU, what uh, difference can you get here? i7 8550U uh, CPU at stock, um, 48 minutes 51 seconds. That's a, a long, long time compared to the i7 7700HQ, which is uh, nearly 31 minutes. The uh, i7 8750H, 23 minutes or so and change there. So that's a huge improvement having those two extra cores. Now, of course, overclocking the uh, i7 8550U brings that uh, down uh, to about 43 minutes, but still it's only a splash in the, in, in the water really and what, uh, what that can achieve. So basically, yeah, more cores, the 8750H is the way to go. Even overclocking the i7 7820HK, 26 minutes, Brings it close, not bad, but not can't compete with those extra two cores. Now, looking at uh, Handbrake, what we have here is um, it's a multi-threaded uh, benchmark, of course. It's an encoding, a four gigabyte video file to MP4, and uh, it loves more cores, but it also likes a fast CPU. Now, of course, if you've got a 15 watt part, it absolutely sucks. It's uh, 61 uh, minutes, or in 54 minutes on the i7 uh, 8650U. Overclocking that does help it, gets it down to around about the 48 minute mark, which is still about 10% slower than the i7 7700HQ. Again, the i7 8750H, you know, 31 minutes, that's a, that's a huge saving there. And now the i7 7820HK, when that's overclocked, that's similar to the stock clocked i7 8750H. So, you know, despite having uh, two less cores, if you really push it, it uh, can get pretty close. Now Adobe's Lightroom converting 50 photos to a video slideshow. This, uh, this bench, well, well this test, 
generally seems to like clock speed turp ups more so than uh, than cores. So, but the 15 watt parts, yeah, you know, still lag behind slice, uh, slightly. They're looking at about 18 minutes uh, for the i7 8550U. Uh, slightly faster for the 8650U, but pretty close to really to the i7 7700HQ when you apply that uh, turbo tweak there. Surprisingly, the, the stock clock i7 7820HK was around about 16 minutes. Of course, it doesn't run that much faster at stock. I didn't have any data to show it to being uh, overclocked. Um, but here you see that the 8750H, the extra few cores, extra two cores, does help, but it's not a massive difference. So if this is the type of workload you do, you know, you probably can get by with the i7 7700HQ and not worry about it too much. To test the gaming, of course, I wanted to keep it standard and uh, using the GTX 1060 uh, graphics cards, which was, of course, is available in uh, this uh, MSI GS65, also the Aero 15W-V8, uh, which I reviewed, um, together with, uh, you know, the Alienware 13 here. That's got the uh, i7 7700HQ and GTX 1060, and uh, my uh, Aorus X3 V7 that's got the... Uh, i7-7820 HK and the GTX uh, 1060 and of course I had data from my Surface Book 2 um, with that 15 uh, watt part and the GTX 1060. So let's take a look at uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, immediately we look at uh, yeah, yeah the Surface Book there, the i7-8650U was pretty much uh, lagging behind when it uh, was uh, overclocked but you know to be fair at stock that uh, lower class processor kept up you know it really did apart from when uh, the uh, six uh, core cpu kicked in here that was 69 fps versus around about 60 for, for the rest when i'm talking about overclocking here it's a gpu being overclocked um there's probably a little bit more headroom in those uh, bigger laptops so you're able to get uh, slightly uh, faster uh, um, turbos there so we've got uh, better speeds and 67 66 and even 71 fps on the uh, i7 8758 which i believe was this uh, msr here now taking a look at uh, doom now i'm picking these games you know mostly because you know they can be very cpu dependent uh, particularly doom and battlefield one on the next slide so here we got uh, i7-8650u you know in the 90s the overclocking the gpu didn't really help an awful lot so the i7-7700hq you know helps good 10 percent there by uh, you know, just uh, it is better. And even overclocked uh, the GPU, it certainly helped a lot as well. Now the i7-7820HK, of course I'm looking at my small Alien, I mean Aorus X3 V7 here. So, you know, that uh, stock clocked 102, overclocking the GPU didn't really help too much. It, it just generated quite a bit of heat in that small uh, chassis. You know, these uh, six core i 7 uh, laptops, uh, a little bit more space and good cooling. We're talking 112 FPS uh, at stock. Uh, that is, you know, that's about 10% faster than the i7-7800HQ. So that is absolutely fantastic. And of course, overclocking it still to about 115 FPS. So that is great. Finally, we're looking at uh, Battlefield 1. Uh, there we gain the uh, Surface Book in the i7-8650U. Stock clocks, you know, we're looking at uh, 60 FPS. So it's pretty close across the board there. The I overclockable uh, i 7 78 20 HK did really help here. It boosted it by, you know, 15% say, compared to the other ones there. And pretty much put it on par with the i7 8750H. So that was a great result showing that Battlefield 1 does like uh, faster CPUs. And uh, overclocking the GPUs, um, again in this one we saw a good benefit with the, uh, great, in fact, a great benefit with the i7 8750H and the uh, AOS X3 V7 yeah, with that uh, overclockable CPU. Um, so again, I think in some of these games where you've got one of a faster CPU, um, it might be worth waiting for that uh, six core CPU, to be honest. So taking a look at the, uh, the summary, um, got uh, Citibench R15 and all the, uh, the benchmarks, handbrakes, so forth on the left hand side. And across the top, we've got the, uh, the four CPUs uh, that, that uh, basically were, were tested and the base mark is um, the i7-8750H. So these are percentages compared to that uh, six core CPU. And of course you can see the 15 watt parts, you know, there's a huge, huge difference, particularly in multi-threaded uh, tasks, without a doubt. I mean, it's a no brainer. Um, but even in, in Lightroom, we're talking uh, you know, quite a big hit with the 80, 8550U, not so bad with the 8650U, um, but uh, it's uh, certainly, uh, there's a big difference there. And gaming wise, as you can see, not as big a difference as it was, is in the, like the CPU test if you happen to do video encoding, video rendering, that type of thing. But the difference is still there nonetheless. You know, 
um, the average uh, gaming difference is uh, you know 11% using the i7 7700HQ. Not a huge difference, you know. You might be talking about six, seven FPS difference there, so it's not that much, but you know it can make the difference there on a 1080p screen. And the uh, if you've got a Surface Book again, that's only 16%. If you do happen to have the i7 7820HK and the GTX 1060, you know that gap is uh, is closed even even more in these you know in these games I've tested. Now non-gaming tests, you know the difference is bigger without a doubt. Those extra two cores um, are great, and it's worthwhile. I I recommend certainly if it's these laptops aren't in your country yet, sit tight, wait a little bit, and they'll be there. And I think it uh, will be worth your while, particularly when the the, the buying price is the same as uh, these uh, i7 7700 HQ ones anyhow. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next time. Bye.